for some upcoming projects I need to build up some new battery packs and my source is usually old laptop packs which I take apart and uh, there'll be a, a link up there to my technique for uh, dismantling these things. I've been successful in the past making packs up for drills and things but I have a particularly high current uh, project and something that has been a a mystery in the past is how much internal resistance plays a part in uh, selecting of, of cells and I haven't had a way until recently of measuring that but that's all changed. Um, here's a new kit on the block and we can see that it indicates the internal resistance of the of the cells. Quite interesting this one here 200 and something milliohms and uh, the other values there. So I'm going to be using that to, to charge the cells and then I'm going to be discharging the cells using um, this device here, a uh, capacity tester, but this also has a four wire arrangement that uh, it will enable it to measure internal resistance. So it will be interesting to compare the discharge and the charge values and see if there's, there's some correlation there. Now, people have asked before if these cells, uh, these battery packs, have been thrown out, um, surely they're, they're not going to be any good. Well, in my experience, um, more than 80% of the cells inside are, are very usable. And I've taken this one apart, obviously. And before I even took it apart, looking at the label here, uh, I was encouraged to see that the cells are LG. Uh, which indeed they are, and that the capacity of the pack is 47 watt hours. Um, that comes to uh, a little over 4,000 milliampere hours, and that's achieved by paralleling these cells up. So we have three cells in, in series and two in parallel, 3S, 2P. Uh, also on the, on the cover here it says um, 10 point 8 volts and that's using the nominal voltage of 3.6 volts per cell. Now in this particular pack when I took it apart um, it was fairly obvious why it had failed. It had in fact failed because of the poor spot welding. Indeed this cell here you can see is, is dented so that was damaged in during the fabrication of this particular battery and that is why it was thrown out. But if we check the voltages, 3.7, 3.7, 3.7, 3 so there's nothing wrong with the individual cells, it was just a fault in the construction. So they will be well worth recovering. On the subject of being worth recovering or not, I mentioned that these are LG cells I've also recovered Panasonic, these are Sony, and just for comparison I was sent these two with um, a headlamp torch. Something I found of interest, even since a boy, was the weight of batteries. Does the weight of batteries correlate in some way to their capacity? And the answer is a clear yes. If we look at the data sheets for some of these cells, this is the data sheet for the Panasonic cells and it tells us the capacity is 2000 milliampere hours and the weight 43 grams. Uh, so if we check that, 42.42, 42.3. If we then look at the specification for the Sony cells, uh, we can see here it's 2,200 milliampere hours, so that's higher capacity, and the weight it says should be 45.5 on average. So checking the Sony cells, 45.29, 45.28. So they're very closely matched, but it doesn't actually mention the capacity on the cell itself. However, these that were sent clearly state proudly that um, they're 3000 milliampere hour. Let's uh, check the weight of these. 27.8 and 
and 24.2. Now, that leads me to suspect, as they're around half the weight of the Panasonic cells, which are only 2,000 mAh, is this number real? <laughs> I think we will find out. In this test, we have four different cells, an LG, the Sony, and the Panasonic, and our, our lightweight friend on the end here. So we'll put these on charge and see what values we get. So the first cell is measuring 289 milliohms. So I'm just going to disconnect that a moment and make sure that it's making good contact. Uh, that, that indeed does appear to be the value. So 283 milliohms, 45 milliohms, 45 milliohms, and 45 milliohms. Now we've checked these two before and got those same values, but this is the first time that we've uh, charged this guy on the end here. Once again, I'm going to increase the current to 1 amp for each of the cells and we'll come back and look at the results. The results of this charge are quite interesting. I guess it's no surprise that our lightweight friend on the end here only managed 379 milliampere hours. The Panasonic, which is allegedly 2000, came in at 1863, so that's in the right ballpark. The Sony is a little disappointing, that's supposedly 2200 and comes in at 1303. Uh, this guy on the end is an LG EP21, uh, which is nominally, I think, 2600 milliampere hours, and that's come in at 1748. So now we're going to go through the discharging of these cells and see if it matches those numbers. Uh, this one is particularly intriguing. It has a high capacity, but also a high internal resistance. So we'll see what this guy makes of that. No surprise here, the discharge of only 251 milliampere hours and an internal resistance of 140. So I shan't be using this cell for any, anything serious. The LG cell that's uh, charged at 1748 has discharged 1543. The internal resistance correlates somewhat, um, 120 milliohms. So these cells probably are not suited for high discharge currents, but um, will probably show a higher capacity when discharged at a lower current. The Sony cell, which charged to 1303, has discharged to just 932 milliampere hours, and the internal resistance according to this is 98 against 45 for the charger. So there's some things to investigate here. In this last test for this video, I'm going to be testing these Sony cells. Now, once again, they're in a parallel arrangement and it's a very good idea if you find them uh, with the contacts obviously being well welded uh, to keep them in their pairs because they will be very well matched and would have been like this from, from manufacture. So keep them paralleled and we'll see what sort of performance we can get out of these paralleled cells in our, our little rig here. Might have to do something about that noisy fan. So 47 milliohms. And once again, I shall increase the current to 1 amp and 52 milliohms. So we'll come back uh, when this charge is completed and uh, check the results before discharging them. Finally, the cells that charge to 4993 discharge at 4.733. So that's uh, a little bit low, but uh, still not bad. And an internal resistance of 53 milliohms, so that's good too. What can we conclude from all of this then? I'm very happy with my new acquisitions, the, the charger and uh, this discharging unit. 
Um, they seem to give a good indication of the internal resistance and we are able to, to determine uh, the low capacity cells and faulty cells and very good cells. We've shown that the weight of cells is a, roughly equivalent to their capacity. The heavier the cell, the greater the capacity. And on the internal resistance front, um, again, it is possible to get high capacity cells with a high internal resistance, but they will not be able to deliver the same amount of current as a lower internal resistance. In terms of matching cells to build packs, uh, obviously most important, the three factors, the cell voltages should be very close within say 0 0.01, 0 0.02 of a, of a volt. Their capacities should be matched so you can check that by the numbers on the, on the cells. And finally the internal resistance, um, they must be reasonably closely matched. So I think I'm going to have a lot of fun uh, doing some more research on this and I hope you found it of interest and we'll leave any comments down in the descriptions um, given your experience on this.